welcome to another episode of Table Talks. I am here with my friends and we are ready to have a really, really fun conversation. Uh, how about we introduce ourselves real quick for those who are watching for the first time. So on this side we have... I'm Jody Grass. I'm the Director of Adult Discipleship and Development here at ERC. I'm Ken Corver and um, I'm in the role of a senior pastor at the church. I'm uh, Richard Caballero. I'm the pastor for the Hispanic ministry here at Emmanuel Church. Yeah, my name is Johnny. I'm a, I'm a youth pastor and a worship leader here at Emmanuel. We're so excited to have this conversation because it's July 4th, all right? Today is July 4th. Amen. Hey, we're celebrating. Can you tell? <laughs> Just kidding. We filmed this a little bit before, uh, but we're here and we're, we're happy to be here. Uh, so why don't you tell me your July 4th meal or tradition? What does your family do in July 4th to make it special? Uh, so growing up, it'd be more probably a day that we're going to have a barbecue at our house or we might go to grandpa and grandma's house. And so you're barbecuing something and everybody's bringing mm. their specialty and have a good time. What's together. your specialty, Pastor Ken? Uh, my specialty is eating the food okay. and, and, <laughs> and smiling at people. <laughs> nice. Yeah. We do, um, we're going to have the whole family at our house mm. and we'll barbecue hamburgers and some brats and um, have some chips and probably some unhealthy food and... Have a good celebration so nice. it's fun we could spend the whole afternoon and evening together so it's a fun time yeah well for us we don't have a really a tradition but uh, we just have some barbecue and play at the pool yeah if we can yeah mm, that's what and we celebrate fourth of july yeah yeah it's a special time for my family and i because uh after a nice meal and when the sun goes down we get to walk outside our door and smell the smoke from the fireworks right. uh, in our neighborhood, <laughs> and it's just the best thing ever. Actually, you can just look up and see all yeah. of the illegal fireworks. Yeah. <laughs> so our, our, our big celebration was in Paramount, uh, you have legal and lots of illegal fireworks, mm -hmm. and so our kids would all go up onto the garage, mm -hmm. and they were, you know, they were like even 10, 7, and they would go on the garage, on the roof, and they could just spend an hour up there just watching oh, in yeah. a circle, and that was the highlight of their 4th of July. It's great. Yeah. Yeah, because we don't yeah. get to spend the money. Yes. Right? Other people do. It's pretty, pretty impressive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, uh, Pastor Ken is also uh, actually shared a sermon uh, this Sunday, uh, and I'd like for him to share a little bit of um, what, he, what he talked about in his sermon, because that's going to be the, our conversation today. Yeah. So would you give us a recap of your sermon? Yeah. Um, the sermon is dealing with the fact on the 4th of July, I think I, the title is uh, How We Can Be the Church in America, uh, How to Be the Embassy of Heaven in America on the 4th of July. As you know, we're in a real divided time uh, as a country. Um, we're divided politically. We have racial division. We have real division and we have stoked division. There's real stuff and there's stuff, people who make money on us being divided. And as that's going on, um, I kind of prayed through, how could we be a gift in our country at this time? Mm -hmm. And what hit me was, could we be the embassy of heaven? Because an embassy is not a representation of the country. The embassy of heaven, it's a representation of heaven. Mm -hmm. So could we be a church reflecting heaven, then blessing our country, being a gift mm -hmm. to our country, but we're not exactly the same when we're gathered as Christians. Closing thought just hit me is, we should, the Vietnamese flat out disciple of Christ in Vietnam, or the Cuban flat out follower of Jesus in Cuba, or in Venezuela or Canada that really is following Jesus, that church. Mm -hmm. We should have a whole lot in common with them. Mm -hmm. And then you become a blessing to your divided country that you love. Mm. Yeah, so Embassy of Heaven, uh, that's your standout uh, for the for the sermon, what do you guys think is so important for the church to uh, truly act as the embassy of heaven, especially right here in the United States? I think I guess when I when I hear embassy of heaven, I I think of something that Pastor Ken says all the time, and that's um, that we're a we're a Christian first, and then we're a and fill in the blank. We're a this political mm -hmm. party, or I'm a mom or a, an employee of Emmanuel Church, I am first a follower of Christ. And so if we're living that way, um, as though we, our residency is in heaven and we're reflecting that, uh, we're representing that, then we're gonna bring blessing and um, peace and unity every place that we go. And so um, as much as we do that in every area of our lives, I think we need to do that as citizens of America as well. Mm -hmm. 
um, that were first believers in Christ. Ah. Yeah, um, I was thinking about uh, when pastors say the church is an embassy of heaven, uh, when uh, Apostle Paul uh, write to the, the church in, in Philippi, to the Philippians, uh, uh, Philippi was a colony of Rome mm -hmm. at that time. And they feel very proud to be a, a Roman citizen because they have a lot of good uh, benefit be a Roman citizen. At that time was having a, a lot of good benefit. But uh, Paul, when they write the letter to Philippians in chapter 3, verse 20, after, after facing all this nationalism that the people have, say, remember, we are citizens of heaven. Mm -hmm. We are citizens of heaven. And then when they write to the church of uh, Corinthians, to the Corinthians in chapter uh, 5, verse 20, say, we are ambassadors, ambassadors mm -hmm. of heaven. Mm -hmm. And we have a message. And that message is the message of reconciliation. Yeah. That's the message the church as an embassy of heaven and earth had for people. And reconciliation, first, first with God, but Paul's writing to the to the vision, chapter uh, chapter two, not only reconciliate with God, but between us, between yeah. people. Yeah. So I think the church, when we're thinking thinking about nationalism, is part of the human race, mm -hmm. and, and, and it's part of the people. Mm -hmm. uh, I can think of me. I live uh, in North America for almost four years. I'm from Uruguay. And sometimes when I hear the, the, the news from Uruguay, it gets me very, very, very sad. Say, why, why Uruguay have to go through all the things? And I criticize my country. But when I hear someone else criticize my country, it's like a <laughs> <laughs> Because huh. it's part of that nationalism. Yeah. Yeah. So that's part of the human race. But we are citizens of heaven. And we are ambassadors of the, yeah. that em embassy, the church, and the message is the message of reconciliation yeah. with God. And under the cross of Christ, we can be our people be reconciled. Yeah. I think that uh, the solution for, for that is no, it's not in anywhere else a part of Christ. I really like that. Yeah. Um, so you, today, right, there's um, political divides that were at one level, and they have gone further. And there have been racial divides, and it feels like recently, in different ways, it can have gone further. And then you move to what Pastor Richard just said, though, about the early church, and all of a sudden, these races, these ethnicities, are all belonging to Christ together, and in Acts 11, they're being called Christ ones. Mm -hmm. Because of the black, Latin, Greek, Jewish, are you kidding? They're, they're all together. And the outsiders called them different. The outsiders called them Christ ones, Christians. Mm -hmm. And so could we do that in a polarized, divisive time? Could we be the people together saying, but we together need to be forgiven of our sins. We together need to be made right with God, and he does. And now we're going to be right with each other. And so like then there was a gift, and could we be a gift in this time as well? Yeah. I mean, I, I think like... Uh, people think that the issues going on right now is just, oh, it's just uh, the uh, United States and it's only been around for 200 years. No, you go back all the way to when the Bible was written and yeah. it's the same issues, yeah. same problems. Same uh, problem. And the solution is in the same place we'll always find it, which is the Bible, right? Yeah. Um, so what are some, what do you think are some practical ways that the church can get involved actually as an embassy of heaven? Because we can understand it and we can believe it. But how can we actually put it into practice? How can we be the church? How, how can we be ambassadors of Christ uh, in, our, in our broken society today? What, what do you guys think? I think we need, as a church, need to be faithful to the message that we have. And the message is the message of the gospel. Mm -hmm. And we need to be faithful on that. I think that's is the... The, the role the Emmanuel Church is playing now, uh, you can be, uh, you can you can help so many ways. But I think the main thing is should be faithful to the message, just keep the message, the message of reconciliation, the message will change the heart of people, 
and also the message has to be aligned with with your actions. Mm -hmm. Just live what you preach, and uh, and I can see that here in uh, Emmanuel Church. Just live what you preach, mm -hmm. and I think that's important thing for the church, because the church can be tempted to uh, change the message to be more flexible with so many other things. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, you start to, to move away from that, from the message that we have. And um, I think it, that's one of the right. things that we are doing here. Yeah, huh? Jenny, Jordy. Yeah, I think um, just one of the things, Pastor Richard, when you were talking about reconciliation, even in the first part that you shared, it just reminded me of your message last week. So the, the last message, the last um, sermon in June, you talked about because we've been reconciled, we need to reconcile. Um, yeah, there, was, there was three R's that you yeah. did, but um, it's because of what we've received from Christ that we're able to actually move in any kind of unity or peace or um, reconciliation with anybody in the world. And so we first have to receive that before we can mm -hmm. actually Mm -hmm. um, give that out or live into that. And so that's an important piece too. If we're not working on our, on our relationship with God, then what we have to give the world is pretty empty mm -hmm. and pretty broken. And so I think our, um, we need to be growing as Christ followers. We need to be leaning into our relationship with God. We need to be knowing, learning more of who God is and how he works and what he's about. And I think, um, I think too often, we are quick to get offended um, instead of instead of paying attention to what what God wants to show us in a situation. Mm -hmm. And if we can bring unity and peace to a situation, um, it's going to be um, much more fruitful. And mm -hmm. so, yeah, we need to lean into our walk with Christ. And I think as a as a church, Emmanuel Reform Church, but as the church, we are the the people are the church. And so we, the people, need to make a difference in the way that we love each other and include each other. And That's good. So, Jenna, your question, as I'm listening and then being encouraged, your question was, how do we live as the embassy, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So I think, I think uh, Emmanuel is trying to do a number of things. So we were Dutch, then you become English-speaking, then you become European-American, then you become the noon service multiracial, then you become Spanish service and the Nepalese service, and you plant churches, and you serve the city of Paramount, which is a Latino community, and you serve the city next door, Compton, which is Latino and African American, and as you are all those backgrounds serving each other and becoming friends, mm -hmm. you're starting to like live as the embassy of heaven. You feed the hungry, and recently the, the church was awarded for being, the, um, for being this blessing through the pandemic of feeding the hungry. We're talking now about our Sunday school program being the English and Spanish together, because the kids speak English. Our youth program being the English and Spanish. Our athletic ministries being everyone. Um, so I think the church just needs to turn and constantly flip around. How do we do this together? How do we love each other? And then when you do meet each other from your different backgrounds, I think you walk with you. You have to walk in humility, and I have I have much to learn. Mm -hmm. I have much to learn from the other people, and can I come in with a humble spirit? and looking to be a teammate and recognize that with our different backgrounds together, we probably represent Christ better. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Yeah, for me, I would, I would say that one of the best ways to love uh, people is to just simply listen. Uh, so for the church, it'll be important for the church to create spaces uh, where people are being heard and, and the different voices are being uh, valued. Um, so pastors, leaders, directors, everyone, just making space available for people to grieve, uh, to lament, mm -hmm. and also to rejoice and be grateful for uh, the United States. Um, but also, yeah, to just say there's there are things that are wrong, mm -hmm. there's stuff that we don't understand, and there's stuff go that's going on, and would you listen to me? Uh, and, and then we can all actually just listen and then share all right, so this is this is what this is all about. This is what God tells us. What I really like what you just said is that we can live uh, in our society in echo chambers and down our little social media mm -hmm. hole with my group. And out of what you just said, I can just picture City Church of Compton, which we planted, black pastor Barry mm -hmm. and his wife, Latino pastors Arnie and Vivi, uh, Latino, Spanish speaking, and then white pastor Pat and Julie Dirksey. All three of them can tell you stories of grief 
Mm. And do I have to turn and go, no, my way of thinking is how it goes. Can the black man who grew up in Compton Paramount, can he tell me things mm. to help me see things that I haven't seen because I haven't lived his life? Could I listen? Could I care? Could I lament? Yeah. And could the, the person who came as an immigrant could I lament, could I care with that Latino pastor's wife and understand and get broadened? Mm -hmm. All the way to, can I lament with Pat Dirksey and Julie who are white and sometimes in Compton they don't get treated right? Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, oh, this is, and we care for, and now we fight for everybody, or we're trying to, mm -hmm. while we listen, learn, and now you even lament. Yeah. You know, can I, one thing I think, um, especially for those who join us online, um, you don't get to see this as much, but Emmanuel Church is a diverse church. And I think that's one of the beautiful things. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned in your sermon how many, many years ago it was thought, you know, the Dutch need to stay together. The, um, I mean, even in the Spanish church, how many different nations are represented? Uh, at least we have 10, 12 different, mm -hmm. different countries and in, different cultures. Right, in your Hispanic, yeah. in your Spanish service, which is incredible. But that's what we should be. Mm -hmm. It should be a group of believers gathering together to worship God. And I think that's one of the beautiful things we get to, to experience when we come here and sit in the sanctuary yeah. um, at Emmanuel. It's a blessing, and it's one of the ways that Emmanuel makes a difference. Yeah. Uh -huh. what, what are we missing, Johnny, right now, out of our conversation so far? What would you like to say further that we uh, No, we're, we're not missing anything. I would like to ask another question. Okay. It was in yeah. my notes. Uh, but it's part of your sermon. Okay. Um, in your sermon, you mentioned, uh, can we be okay with criticizing the United States, but not want to tear everything down? Just like, oh, this is just yeah. a mess, and uh, throw the table. Oh. Yeah. So how can a Christian live in that tension of, okay, uh, I'm, I'm okay with criticizing the United States. There are things that are, that are not right, uh, but I'm also not want to throw everything. Yeah. I thought I'd like to jump in and then have everyone else jump in. Um, I shared this in the sermon. Christians more than anyone should be aware of, oh, my country's not perfect. Mm -hmm. Christians more than anyone. Because when I read the Old Testament, it's a nonstop story of the brokenness of the humanity and of, of Israel, the mm -hmm. chosen people, and all, there's all their sin. And I go to the New Testament, and there's all this sin and brokenness, and Jesus has come for saviors. So if the whole story of the Bible is about all these people and their deep brokenness and sin, why would I think that my country walks without sin? Mm -hmm. So could I critique and join the critiquing? And then like you shared and I shared my sermon, but it's within the spirit of, can I help bless my country? Can I help heal my country? Can we repent our way there? Because it feels like it's, you can't criticize or, or critique. And the other side is, oh, we need to blow the whole thing up. Mm -hmm. And both of those uh, aren't biblical and they won't solve the problems. Right. And I think that the church is a prophetic voice in the society. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, and we have to, our, our voice has to be here mm -hmm. in what is wrong. Right. But on the other hand, we are called to pray for our country. Right. Pray yeah. for the people who are in power. Yeah. So I think the church uh, plays a, a very huge role in the, role yeah. in the, in the, in the society. And uh, I was thinking in the, in, the, in the cross of Christ. The cross, uh, at the time when Christ was put up on the cross, the cross was a symbol of shame, pain, hate, humiliation. Oh. And Christ changed that. Now yeah. the cross is a symbol of reconciliation oh. Hope and with God yeah. and then with the people. Yeah. So I think the, the, the church has to have the message, but on the other hand, but as long as long, and ch the church has to raise their voice and speak out. But like you say, we speak out, but you love your country. Mm -hmm. And uh, we need to have the, the balance. And the good thing is in the United States, this is a, a huge blessing that we sometimes don't understand that the, the greatest of, the, of that, that we live in democracy. So many Christians in other parts of, they don't live in democracy. They don't allow to speak. Yeah. We are allowed to speak, right. and, and, and that is a blessing. Yeah. But on the other hand, we have to, the same way that we criticize or we speak what is wrong, we have to pray for our country yeah. and pray for the people who are in power. It doesn't matter which uh, uh, party, a political party yeah. they are. Probably you don't like it, probably you like it, but your role is just pray for them and pray for the country. Yeah, 
and that's that's a huge role the church can have. So that goes right in line with I, what I was thinking as well, Pastor Richard, is one thing I would say is the word criticize, I think um, when we're critical of something, it's, we focus on the bad, focus on the bad, focus on the bad, and it, it puts our spirit in a bad place because mm -hmm. we become really negative and you kind of can't see your way out of it. And so, yeah, we can see truth. We can see truthfully what's wrong with our country, I think, without uh, criticizing and, and wallowing in this really dark place. Um, so it, it is important to recognize what's wrong and what, what needs to be changed and how we can be a part of that change. But 100% I'm with you. Every night, my husband and I pray together before we go to sleep. And um, every night, part of my prayer is closes with, God, would you help us as a country recognize our sin, repent of our sin, and turn to you? Because that's actually our only hope as a country. And so, um, and then I, we pray for our leaders, um, for our president, for the, the leaders in the White House, for the leaders of our the state that we live in. Um, it's important for us to pray for them, that they would bend their knee to God, that they would follow God's will, that they would seek Him, and that we would be able to live out the way that God has called us to, to live out. And so, totally agree with you. Um, we can recognize it, but we need to be praying for our country, and we need to be a part of the reconciliation. And I think that we are living in the in the time of history when when now, the ugly part or the bad part of so many things start coming out because yeah. everybody now have a phone, a smartphone, who can just in a minute record uh, bad behavior of the police, bad behavior of this, and all this bring hate out. Yeah. And then now is when the church needs to speak and speak what is wrong, but at the same time, keep the message of hope and reconciliation. Mm. Thank you. Yeah. I think one of the one of the challenges um, that the church faces is that, sadly, uh, the church is uh, in in uh, recent years has lost its prophetic voice. Um, by this, I mean that there are many churches who are not uh, close to the gospel, who are not really preaching the gospel, and uh, people are not listening. I mean, I go on social media and I look at what the young people are saying, they, they don't trust the church. They don't, they, they don't want to be tied to a church because they think uh, Christians are liars, uh, Christians are just out to get your money and all these lies, obviously. Uh, so I think I go back to what Pastor Richard was saying at the beginning, what the church needs to do is do the hard work of preaching the gospel, uh, staying really close and true to, to the Bible, to the scripture. and. Um, then the church can actually be a prophetic voice. Otherwise, we're just gonna be phonies. And I know that not every church is like that, um, but there are many churches who have done, uh, who are not helping the, the people who are, or the churches who are truly trying to preach the gospel and are trying to bring this message of hope. Uh, one of the reasons why I, I really came to appreciate the Reformed tradition is because uh, the Reformed churches seek to do that. They seek to stick true to the Bible, uh, to preach Christ every single time. Um, and that's one of the reasons as a Hispanic that I actually really enjoy the Reformed Church. Because going back to the other churches I was a part of and I would visit, I just thought it was odd. I was like, nobody's talking about Jesus here. Uh, what's going on? Um, and now as I get older, I'm like, well, that was kind of a waste of time. But not really, because then we came here, right? Um, <laughs> then I found my way here. But uh, one of the reasons why I enjoy the Reformed tradition is because we, it, it seeks, at least, it tries to stay true to the gospel. Um, and that's what the church needs, so that, so that the, the church can truly be a prophetic voice, especially in the times when it needs it the most, uh, which is what we're living in today. Um, as you guys know, I love Emmanuel Church, not just because it's my church, but because I, I've come to know its history. Uh, and I love all the stuff that it's done. Uh, Pastor Ken, would you share just one of the couple things that, many things that Emmanuel Church has done here uh, in the city of Paramount and Compton to, to contextualize the gospel and to, to be a light, and to, or maybe what it's currently doing now with the, with the Bright Lights program that it's gonna start. Is there anything that comes to mind for you right now that, I, and I know Emmanuel's not perfect, but I love Emmanuel, and I know, uh, and I, for, when I share, 
to my friends in seminary, my professors, they're always like, yes, Emmanuel's doing great things, and Paramount is doing great things. So do you have anything that comes to mind right now from 100 years? I know, you're not, I know you haven't been here the whole time. But, uh, you, I look like it. You know, you, know, you know the history better than I do. Uh, is there anything that comes to mind from like past years and then maybe what's coming up uh, yeah. that Emmanuel has been really helpful with? Well, I think uh, Emmanuel's been uh, probably been helpful because Emmanuel has stayed. And as the city transitions, mm -hmm. the church says we follow Christ, we're in Christ, and we're going to stay here and serve the community. The community transitions. Can we welcome the community in, be as Christ together? Can we help a city rise? And Paramount has been a part, Emmanuel's been a part of Paramount's rising. We live next door to Compton. At our 80th anniversary, 16 years ago, we repented. We repented of living next door to Compton and having done nothing to care for the city. So you repent your way forward, and we repented. And there's been 1,600 buildings painted, every school painted twice, um, grandma homes painted, moving into a thing called Bright Lights of Compton. We hope to help there be 100, then 1,000, then 10,000 bright lights. What's a bright light? A bright light just says, I love my community, and I'm going to do something right outside the door of my house, my school, my business to help my community be lifted, pick up trash, clean, sweep, paint, whatever. So, the, so we're a part of that, and, and this concept, I shared this with Jody a little bit ago. There's a concept called reparations. Mm -hmm. Reparations, with, here's the argument. The argument is when black people were slaves for 400 years, or hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years and oppressed, is there ever a payment back when the Japanese were interned? When they came out, there was payment. Native Americans, there's been payment. What about black people? So that's, that's, a, that's an argument and discussion or point that's out there. And I show this with Jody, you know what we've been doing? We spent three to four million dollars the last uh, 15 years. Mm -hmm. There's a Compton warehouse that's now worth a million bucks with all of its tools and everything. There's every school's been painted. We, we've spent three million, four million dollars. And now we're putting probably 150, 200 grand a year into helping there be the staff to help a Bright Lights movement. Mm -hmm. Compton, it was a black town, Latino, now it's Latino and black. How do we give back that the schools, the houses, the neighborhood, it all lifts? How do you give? So to answer your question, Emmanuel has stayed imperfectly, cared imperfectly, helped the city rise, now a city next door, and I guess you put money into it, you put time and heart into it, you put relationship in it, and you repent your way forward, love each other, and serve. Is that okay? That's great, great answer. Right. <laughs> Couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> thank you, Pastor. Yeah. And thank you all for uh, joining us in this conversation. And thank you at home for listening and for uh, sticking around. We hope that you can also be an Embassy of Heaven uh, right at home with your family. So please join us in doing so. We're, we're trying our best, uh, and we uh, pray that you do so as well, because our country needs it. So let's, uh, maybe Pastor Ken, would you pray? Yeah, and, yeah. Lord, thank you uh, for your embassy of heaven, uh, your church. It's your church. And we thank you for a country we live in, a beautiful country and broken, beloved and divided. And we pray for this church and the churches around the country and around the world, that wherever we are, we would be the embassy of heaven, reflecting you, repenting of our sin, racially reconciling, serving our community, not veering from the gospel that you are the alone, the savior, nor from your word. Would you help us be your church? To you be the glory. Help us be the embassy of heaven and get all the praise. In Christ's name, amen. amen. All right, thank you. We'll see you next time.